Hi everyone and welcome to part one of, uh, what did we call this? Morning Ridge Light. I'm trying to come up with these original names, I'm trying my best here. Now, I want to welcome you to Uscreen as well as part one I also uh, put up on YouTube. So, uh, YouTubers, if you would like to see part two and three, you need to subscribe to uh, Uscreen and the address is down below. You can take a look on how to find that. So, today was block in, and uh, this particular uh, ridge is behind my studio and um, on the other side of uh, the Devil's Backbone here in Loveland. So, uh, don't make this too complicated. We want to cover the canvas with paint, value paint, value colors, and tomorrow we'll get more detailed in balance of all this and uh, make it come together. But at least you've got something to work with to say, is this too dark? Is this too light? Um, you know, to see what's around it so you can make better judgments of uh, what needs to be improved and increased in value or decreased in value. So that's what part one's all about, as well as getting our shapes in the right place, which is kind of our very first foundation step that we do. Okay, with that said, get outside and paint. A little hard right now. We've got uh, nine inches of snow out there. But uh, get in front of that canvas. Don't let it intimidate you. And keep painting. Paint with your friends. Get critiques. And uh, you'll be surprised over a period of time how good you get if you keep at it. The only thing I do is to give you uh, instructions every week and uh, give you a hundred of my very best videos over on Uscreen. So that'll keep you pretty busy. So get on over there and uh, take a look at all that stuff. All right. Enough said by me. Let's get with today's painting. All right. Hello everyone and welcome to part one of Winter Light. This is the Devil's Backbone west of Loveland, Colorado. And uh, my house is on the other side of this thing. Uh, and I just love this area when you have the sun coming up early in the morning. You get a few minutes of this really warm, warm light. And uh, that's what we hope to capture in this. We had a similar one that we did of this um, some months back, but I like this one uh, just because I'm inspired by it. And I've got some ideas uh, that I'm going to incorporate in this painting. One is I'm going to have a little bit more lead in with the snow area. And I'll have a little bit more light on the left and maybe on these trees on the right. But boy, I mean, I like this... Um, uh, reference because it has such drama going on. It has these warm lights and these darks and these cools down here, the ceruleums, and I'm really looking forward to painting it. It inspires me and uh, that's why I paint and that's why I share this stuff with you guys so you can uh, do this with me. Okay, to get started on part one we have a blue, red, yellow and uh, then we have a Naples, a gray, so we have our basic uh, palette here with my titanium white on the lower right. I also like to add uh, burnt sienna right here and viridian. All right, uh, with that, uh, I've got my, looks like a, like a 10, maybe a 6 or a 7, and it looks like I've got a, a number 2 here too. Got my old T7, my favorite of all palette knives. And we will get started with block in. Block in part one is we're going to figure out where these shapes are going to be and then fill them in with value color. And I hope to do that in the next 28 minutes. All right. So let's get started with a drawing color. So let's get some gray and some blue and some white. Uh, maybe a little bird seeing it in there too. I always have two T7s because I have a tendency to push too hard on these. And they have a structural weakness right here at the neck. And I sometimes break it there. So I always kind of have one. 
in the spare. I want to try to have a foundation line and I think this isn't quite a third but I think it's a little bit below third here and it's where the shadow hits the light and I'm going to put that on there somewhere. It's either somewhere up there and let me see if I can fit that backbone in there. That is just trying to just doing a kind of like a stock market thing going on here that kind of a graph and and I think I I like the design it's just in the wrong place I'm going to move him over a little bit and put backbone over here I know that's not what's in the reference, but it's just, just give me a minute or two to work this thing out. I just like more of a draw on this side, and I'll balance it out with some other areas as we go along. So, oh, and I think I'll put some shadow over here and maybe a little bit longer draw here. There we go. They used to, the very first industry in Loveland was right in this area where they mined gypsum. You can kind of see, if you look at the reference closely, a cliff here where they dug out clay or, or gypsum. You can see some scars on this hill. The light tends to heal the wounds of the old scars. Okay, I better not get too involved in that because I may have to change it. So I want to put a hill over here. And then there's another hill kind of coming off this way. There's a gap here in the backbone, and then you can get to that gap to my studio and my house and my, my place where I live. So then we have all these different bushes and stuff up in front. So, so far so good. I'm going to switch to a number seven filbert. I'm going to add some more blue to this mixture and some gray. Blue. Gray, a little white, gray, blue, and I'm going to say, okay, everything back here is going to be in shadow in here. It's just like a, a light scrub. In other words, I'm not doing you know that. I'm just doing light scrub for now. And that's the uh, valley area. I'm going to add a little bit more red, a little bit more blue, some gray, touch of viridian, and some white. I'm going to put some burnt sienna in there to darken it up a little bit. And I want to come up with a bush design. You can see it's a darker value. As I bring things closer, things are going to be darker. And I'll put a dark coming through here. So this will be primary dark, secondary dark, and lightest dark here. And you can see I'm making big bushes and small bushes. Just turn the brush sideways and come up with a
with a scrubby bush look. See how that dark kind of divides this area from the one behind it? And when you do these angles on the bushes, then it, it defines a hill with this angle. And then as they flatten out, they get more horizontal. Makes sense. Okay, I'm going to use this as a lead-in area. And have some of these lights go into the background lights right in here. I'm going to put in more bushes than I really need. And this will be a light area going into a darker area. Okay, I need to darken up this area a little bit. I added just a little bit of white to my mixture, just a little bit. And I'm going to add another layer of value. This time it has a little bit of white in it. I'm using titanium white. All right, let me get back and look at my design. And so far, so good. Okay, now for the sake of time, I'm going to do a little bit of this area, but not all of it, because I don't have time to do all of it. And, but I'll give you instructions on how to do it. So let me get these darks off to the side. And let me get some ceridium and squeeze some of that out. I like ceridium as a snow color in shadow. Okay, we're about 10 minutes into this so far, and let's go with some ceridium. Don't need much, that may be too much. And I'm mixing it thoroughly, getting both sides off my T7. I'm going to go back to this scrubber, see if I can do it with that. Now, I probably have some contamination in there, and so be it. But you can see what I'm doing here is coming in with this snow color in shadow. You can see I've wrestling with contamination in here. And I'll try to be a little bit more careful. But one way you can deal with contamination is just reload a lot. And get the, the clean paint off your brush just by twisting the other side, which is cleaner than the contaminated side. All right, I'm going to fill in the edges later, but now I'm going to add a little bit more white, and I'm going to put the snow design in the hill. See, it's a little bit different, different design I made. All right, that's a start. And let me soften some of these edges. All right, what I'll do off camera is get in here a little bit closer 
and try to cover up some of the white of the canvas. All right, let's switch over to the orange, but maybe for now, before we do that, let's get some sky color in here. So it's got a little bit more gray in it and a little bit more white. So I'm throwing that in the cerulean. And let's see what that does just for a base color. Maybe a little lighter. Lighter. And we'll get that in. The reason why it might be good to get this in now, the sky, is to try to get a better perspective of what the intensity of the orange we're going to put in here on the mesa, the devil's backbone as they call it. Anyway, it's an open space. It's really a neat place to go to in Loveland. During COVID or the height of COVID, I guess we're still in COVID, people really took to that trail because they could be outside and have their social distancing and I'm just keeping it thin by picking it up with a paper towel. All right, now I can move my cerulean gray pile over to the side. I left my longer scraper over at my friend Lisa's house. I was painting with her last Thursday morning. All right, so I've got my stubby one. I like a long handle razor blade cleaner, but this will do. I'm not complaining. All right, what can we do here? Let's get our mixture. All right, so let's go with some red and yellow. Makes orange. Add a little bit more yellow. I want to just get one good base color that's well mixed like that. When I say looks like that, I mean from the overhead, you can see I have one base color. And then on one side, we'll add a little bit more red and a little bit more burnt sienna. And maybe some yellow in there. A little bit more yellow. So we're going to have a dark and a light. And I think we're doing fine on time. I'm going to get to my number 10 here, and check it to make sure I've got all my cleaner out of it. I think I cleaned it sufficiently. And I'm going to just, just loosen it up just a little bit of yellow. There's a lot going on if you really look at this reference. I send this reference out to my students on my student update. If you want to be part of that, you need to contact me and I will make sure you get it. And you can download and put it on your computer. If you have a, I kind of like this having the screen right here and so forth. It, better than looking at a photograph, which is, you know, okay. I do that a lot. I mean, I survived doing that for many years. Now I'm getting a little bit warmer color in here. Oop, a little too much. And I'm putting that in this area. And I think I'm going to lighten a few areas. I'm adding some white to my mother color here and I think that is going to help right in here 
and I think there's some in here and here and I've got some good darks coming off there so I'm going to add some red and some burnt sienna and some white I'm getting too much into detail I know but it's just going to give us some reference of what's going on here and it shows the angle of slope here sorry this looks like finger painting at this stage it's very crude but at least you're getting an idea of how does this value color compare to the other value color I'm going to get some blue gray back into the mixture here and I think I need to put something like that in here and maybe here it's a little bit more interesting with this I think and I think we have some pretty good darks over in here And I'll just get that all value colored in. There's a back hill to the upper right. I'm going to add some white to this darker orange color I have. And I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to put a light, I think, coming through the valley here. And some cerulean color here. This is from the previous mixture I had on the side. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue ultra to the cerulean color and put that in as I think mountains or something like that back in here. Now I do have these fellas here in the upper part to complete and they have kind of a little bit more angle toward the sun. Anyway, showing more, more orange. I'm going to add more yellow and red. <gasps> too much red. And with this number 10 I'm going to try it. I need more red. Just a touch more red, please. Oh, boy. I was using um, Crimson Lake the last couple of months, and I picked up a tube of alizarin. And I have to remember, there's a slight difference between the two. Okay, my design's a little different than the backbone that you see in the reference, but that'll get us started should be lighter than that too but it's a color value we got it in there so that is part one try to keep it simple you know I've got my darks in front my my warms up on top and try to keep it simple so we have a few minutes left and as I said I'm gonna fill in these off camera this cerulean the snow color but what I'm thinking of doing is work on this foreground darks a little bit more. So with the few minutes I have left, I'm going to move my warm color over. See what I can do with these foregrounds. So let's go back to an ultra blue. Let's add some red to it. Red, gray, and we're going to need some white. And we need some warm in there, so I'm going to throw some burnt sienna in there. And we have a beautiful color that we will incorporate in the bushes. So let's go and use our 10. I'm trying to get some of those warms out of this number 10 I've got. I'm going to load up both sides 
thickly and see how I, I flip the brush over because of contamination or reload it. Oh, I filled that in right there. I didn't want to do that. My bad. Do what I say, not what I do. When I was a young man, I was a missionary overseas, and my, when I came back, I, I thought I was going to be an Episcopal priest. And, but this thing about do what I say and not what I do kind of got to me. And I really thought, you know, I need a little bit more latitude in my life to goof off. Not that there aren't some great Episcopal and Catholic priests that goof off, but... Ooh! I kind of like that. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit more... Let's get some Viridian in this mixture. I want to go back in this area. I'm going to add some more white. And I'm going to solidify this in here a little bit. Need a little bit more grease. So I added just a little bit of turp just to get some run out of this. And you can see there's a difference between this value and the back value. And you say, well, there's a lot going on in there. And I know, but we're going to paint over this. I just want a good base color. Oop, lost my image. To use some of this to go up on this side of the hill here. And I think there's some shadow down in here too. And I'll use some of it in here. Kind of accent there's a part of the hill was still here after they dug out for, I think this was a gypsum or clay quarry right there. Going back to my dark and I'm going to Get some good darks up front. I probably need more. And I want to make sure I get some darks on that ridge. All right, with that, I'm going to come to an end because we've covered a lot of territory and we have a good base to get started uh, tomorrow. Okay, with that, uh, wow, that was, that was block in and uh, covered everything with value color. Good or bad, we can make a better assessment of what value needs to go lighter, darker, grayer, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna bring winter light to an end and thank you so much, YouTubers, who can get part one and you can find part two and three and you screen and thank you you screeners for tuning in today thanks so much and enjoy your block in all right bye bye